We are going to go ahead and get started. Everyone, good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, Good morning, Miss Good morning, and I'm going to go ahead. Good morning. All right, I'm going to go ahead and mute everyone. Good morning. All right, I see we have some hands up. And, oh, and we still have some kids coming on. We're going to try to get started on time here. We've got a lot going on today. So we're going to try to go ahead and get started. So we had a question about math yesterday and Sendina said I didn't send a math video. You're absolutely right. So what I sent you yesterday was this particular video. Thumbs up if you did your adding with your butterfly. This was your math for Monday. And so what we decided, yep, that's the one, Samira. So what we decided was that this is going to be our math on Mondays because we don't have a math meeting on Mondays and that's not going to change. We're not going to do any more big math on Mondays. It's just too much to record the video and not be able to do it with you. So we are gonna continue to do, because we only have one more chapter. We're like one and a half chapters and we're done. So we decided no more big math videos for Monday. We will finish our math chapters when we're all together. Okay, when we're all together, that's when we'll finish our math. Because it's a lot easier to do it that way than to have you have to flip through a bunch of different videos. That gets a little tricky sometimes. Slash is like, no, Mrs. Light's easy peasy lemon squeezy. Or you don't like to do it that way. We prefer to do math together. I think so. I think we prefer to do math together. So all those videos, to me, they seem a little bit tricky. So we're not gonna do it that way anymore. We actually only have about seven weeks left of kindergarten. Not too many days at all. And we're gonna be doing a big shift pretty soon because after spring break, about half of you, and I have the list now, about half of you are actually gonna be coming into the classroom with me, okay? So half of you are gonna stay at home and about half of you are, are gonna come into the classroom with me after spring break. And I already know who those kids are and your parents would be able to tell you who it is that's coming in to be with me um, and who's gonna stay at home. So we're gonna have kind of a big shift after spring break. So we're gonna talk a lot more about that. And I didn't even record an end of the day video yesterday because the teachers had so many meetings all about all the changes. So I apologize for that, but I'm gonna include yesterday's work in today's video. Lots of you know what I'm talking about. So I'll just record a longer video, but we're gonna see some changes, but they're all good and everybody's gonna be A-OK -okay, and everybody's still gonna be be with Mrs. Lai, okay? So everybody's gonna finish up kindergarten. We're gonna be good and Noah's been so patient. He's been raising his hand and just waiting. Yes, Noah. Very handsome. You're gonna look very nice on Easter. And also some Easter eggs to be, and then also a, a short with tigers on it. And I'm gonna zip it and then I'm gonna put a button on it. Wow, sounds very nice, Noah. You continue to be one of the luckiest kids I've ever known. That is awesome. I have this wow, very nice. It's so rude. And also, nice if I gave me this shirt. I'm wearing on. Very handsome, very handsome. All right, let me give one quick turn to our almost birthday boy, Langston. Yes, Langston. 
It's gonna be Langston's birthday here in just a few more days. So, so it's Dallin's birthday before. Yeah, it's Dallin's birthday. That's one more day before my birthday. Whose birthday comes before yours? Uncle Ma, 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 Ma. That is awesome. You're almost birthday buddies. That's super cool. All right, boys and girls. We are going to keep talking about letter J. Letter J, we're gonna add some more words to our word list. All right, now this week is that crazy week where our last day of school is Thursday. On Friday, we don't have school. Did you know that? There's no school on Friday. You're starting spring break. Lots of you I know are going to be getting ready for Easter. So I think some of you already have some letter J words in your smart brains and you know J says J like jump rope. That's also a good word right there. So let me pull this little guy over. Then I'm gonna start calling on some friends. So let's take a look at what we have so far. We've got juice, juggle, jacks, and I want to hear Ira's word. Ira, go ahead and unmute yourself, honey. What's your J word? Japan. Japan, that's excellent. Great word. Now Japan is a country just like the United States of America where we live is a country. And because Japan is a country, it starts with the capital J. So I'm gonna go ahead and start writing it over here. I'm gonna write a nice capital J. And we can even sound this word out. So everybody can get your hand up. We can stretch it like a rubber band. Say it slow with me, ready? J. Ja is actually the reading A. Ja pan. Now I literally just spell pan. P pan. Ja pan. Like that. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to draw this. It's like a Japanese flag. It has a red dot in the middle. Like that. It's a Japanese flag. The flag for Japan. All right. That was a great word. Let's call on Mahialani. Mahialani, what is your J word? Jump rope, clap it with me. Jump rope. Now we have, this is a really special word. It's called a compound word. So we're gonna write jump, and then we're going to write rope, okay? So we can stretch out both of those words, and jump rope has that long O sound, which we're learning all about this week. So get your hand up, ready to say it slow with me. I want everybody making sure they're sounding this word out. What's my first letter, Ava? What's my first letter? Wrong color, Mrs. Lai. Get a green. Where's your green? All right, here we go. Say it slow with me, ready? Ja uh, umbrella. Jump. Jump. So that's my first word. What's my second word? Now we're gonna write rope. R what's that letter? R o o. There's a long o sound. O p p p. There's a p, and because o says o, I have to write a bossy e on the end. There's my bossy e right there. So I'm gonna draw a jump rope. So here's a rope. And it's gonna have some colorful handles on it, just like this. I'm gonna hold on to my jump rope and play. All right, boys and girls, I wanna hear Fiona's word. Fiona, go ahead and unmute, honey. Jukebox. Jukebox, I love it. That's a great word. Boys and girls, a jukebox is sort of an old fashioned way to play music. I, she has a picture of a jukebox. I love it. That is awesome. All right. So boys and girls, we know j, j, 
starts with letter J. So here I go. I'm going to write my letter J right here. So let's go ahead. Let's sound this out because this is juke box. It's another compound word. Two words that are put together to make a new word. So let's get our hands up. Let's stretch it out. Here we go. Ready? Ju -u is actually a U. Now we're gonna keep sounding it out. Ava, say it slow with me. Ready? Ju -k 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 -k. I've got a K. Now I have to actually add a silent E. Ju -k -b -b. Ba -a octopus. What's that letter? Jukebox. What's that letter? It's an X. All right, so a jukebox, I'm just gonna draw some musical notes because jukebox is a way to play music. So I'm gonna just draw some musical notes down there. It's a way to play music. And I think we can add another word over here. We've got to finish today and tomorrow. So let me call on Xerxes and then K.O. They've been waiting really patiently. Jude. Say it one more time, honey. Jude. Jude. What does that mean? Do you know what that means? It's in this one of the Beatles songs. Oh, can I tell you a secret? It's a name. It's actually a name. Did you know that? Can I do this? Can I add it up here? Is that okay, Xerxes? Because it's a name, it's a special name. So I'm gonna just write it right up here. And the name of the song is Hey Jude, right? Hey Jude. So it's J-U-D-E, Jude. And that's a song. So I can even draw a musical note for that. There we go, it's a song. That would be played in a jukebox. It's a jukebox song. There we go. All right, Kaya, let's hear it. J. La, as in a? Ninja. As in the ninja. Okay, so, so Kaya loves Ninjago. I don't know if, it, I know this, because Kaya and I talk about this. So Kaya loves Ninjago and he loves the ninja J. Is J, what color is J? Is J blue? Yeah, J's, J's the blue ninja. Okay, so I'm gonna write, I'm gonna write his name. Castle Lightning. Oh, the J, J is the blue ninja, ninja of lightning. Okay, so I'm gonna write J's name up here. J-A-Y. So there's J and he is the ninja of lightning. So I'm gonna draw some lightning bolts. And there we go. So there's J. There's the lightning bolts. All right. That was great. Let me call on Aaron real quick. Yes, Aaron. Say it louder, Aaron. Jungle. Jungle. I love it. Let's clap it. Jungle. Jungle. Two syllables to that word. So because it has two syllables, we know in our smart brains that it needs at least two vowels. Remember, every syllable needs a vowel. Okay, I think this might have to be the last word we write today, but I love this word, jungle. So I'm gonna start with letter J, and I want everybody to get your hand up and stretch it with me. Here we go, J uh, umbrella. John, there's actually an N sound. John, g, g, goat, g, g, goat, jungle. Anybody hear that last sound? It's an L. And guess what? Because there has to be a vowel, there has to be a silent E here too. J-U-N-G-L-E, jungle. And jungles have lots and lots and lots of trees. Am I right? Is a jungle full of trees? I'm gonna draw lots of trees here. Tall ones too. So let's see here.
There we go. There's our jungle. There's our trees right there. Now, boys and girls, any other J words you have, keep them in your smart brain right now. We never even started with our song this morning, did we? I'm still looking at it. You can laugh at me, that's okay. My mind is going a million different places right now because we're trying to figure everything out over here. All right, why don't we sing our song? Should we sing our song for a little bit? That would get us up and moving and grooving, it's okay. Sorry boys and girls, Mrs. Lai made a silly little mistake. Let's go ahead and sing along with Jack Hartman. And today's one of those days where we're starting from about the middle of the video so we can see all the so all the words at the end, okay? So get yourself moving and grooving. This will be perfect because then we get to talk about butterflies. So we want to be moving and grooving. So here we go. R-O-M from. F-R-O-M from. F-R-O-M from. From, from, from. Side words, there are so many I know. Side words, they help my reading flow. E-A-C-H-E-C-H. E-A-C-H-E-C-H. frozen but when we get frozen we're just gonna breathe you don't even have to tell me because I see it on my end too we just we just stay muted and we just keep going and just doing our best all right boys and girls so here it is another non-fiction butterfly book now I promise you when you hear this book, you are going to learn something new about butterflies. So how am I gonna learn something new about butterflies? Should I do my best to listen? Yeah, should I look at the pictures? Should I think about what the words are saying? Yes, all of those things will help me be a learner and learn more about butterflies. So all of these things are all true about butterflies. So eyes right over here. This is Butterflies by Emily Nye, illustrated by Ron Broda. And you see there's a butterfly over here and it's landed on a flower right here and it's drinking, I bet it's unrolling its proboscis. So let's take a look right here. Butterflies. Butterflies live all over the world. They are in backyard gardens. They are in rainforests far away. You can find butterflies on cold mountains. Did you know butterflies live where it's cold? and in hot deserts. So they live where it's cold and where it's hot. Butterflies are insects. 
like flies and ladybugs. They have six legs and body parts and a body in three parts and skin that is hard like a shell. Like most insects, butterflies have wings. So butterflies don't even just have two wings, they actually have four wings, two on each side. There are more than 20,000 different kinds of butterflies. They come in different colors. Look at all of these beautiful butterflies. So many beautiful butterflies. Butterflies come in different sizes. The biggest butterfly has wings as wide as a robin. That means the butterfly is as big as a bird. And the smallest butterfly is about the size of this picture. So can you imagine some butterflies could be this big or this tiny? But every butterfly starts out the same way as a tiny egg. This monarch has just laid one of her eggs on a leaf. So she's actually laying the egg on the leaf and the egg is going to stick. It's not going to fall off. A few days later, the egg hatches. Now it is a tiny caterpillar. Is that looking like a butterfly yet? No, definitely not. It's got to go through a change, doesn't it? All the caterpillar does is eat and rest, eat and rest. It chews up many leaves. It grows and grows. So the caterpillar has a simple job. Eat, grow, and rest. Eat, grow, and rest. And pretty soon, we're gonna see that a caterpillar has another job too. I'm gonna tell you what it is and it's gonna sound crazy. Okay, are you ready for this? You know what caterpillars do a lot? They poop, a lot, a ton, actually. We're gonna see that because after spring break, we're gonna have caterpillars of our very own in the classroom and we're going to watch them grow and change. And we're going to see how much they eat and how they practice spinning their silk and how much they poop. Caterpillar poop has even a special name. It's called frass. Say that with me, frass. Doesn't sound as disgusting as poop, does it? But that's what it is. It's caterpillar poop. All right, let's keep reading. Two weeks go by. Now the caterpillar is ready to change. It finds a safe spot on a twig or leaf. It spins a silk pad. It hangs down from the pad. So pretty soon it's time. And we've got to remember too, because we're going to be looking for this with our caterpillars. Once the caterpillar is hanging upside down, it needs to make the shape of the letter J. And once it's making the shape of the letter J, we have to leave it alone. We have to be so careful because that is the time it will start to form its chrysalis. It looks as if the caterpillar is just resting, but it isn't. Slowly, it sheds its skin, then it forms a hard shell. Inside the shell, the caterpillar is changing. So there's that chrysalis. After about a week, the shell cracks open. Out comes a pretty monarch butterfly. Her wings are wet. She can't fly yet. She must let her wings dry in the sun. So when that caterpillar emerges from its chrysalis, we will see also that the wings will be wet. They'll be dripping even. Then the monarch flies to a bed of flowers. She is hungry. Butterflies do not eat leaves like caterpillars. They suck sweet juices from flowers. Their tongue works like a straw. And this caterpillar already has its tongue out working like a straw right here. Some animals like to eat butterflies, but these butterflies are safe. Their wings look like leaves and bark. The bird does not see them. Can you see them? So there's actually camouflage butterflies. There's one right there. And there's one, well, that might be it. 
the camouflage butterfly is right there. It's hard to see. It looks a lot like a leaf. Pretty amazing. Are these butterflies? No, they are moths. Moths look a lot like butterflies, but they fly at night. Butterflies fly in the daytime. Is this a butterfly? Yes, you can tell because its wings are closed. So we talked a little bit about this yesterday. What is the difference between a butterfly and a moth? Because they look so much alike. A moth is nocturnal, it flies at night. The butterfly is diurnal, it flies in the daytime. A butterfly's wings close. Can you be a butterfly? So open, close, open, close, open, close. That is how the wings of a butterfly work. The wings of a moth are different. They don't close like a butterfly's. They stay open like this. So if you see this, this is a moth. But if you see wings that close, that is a butterfly. Wings that stay open, moth. Nighttime, moth. Wings that stay open, wings that close, and an insect that's flying in the daytime, butterfly. The summer is ending. Fall is on the way. Most butterflies do not like the cold. Some sleep all winter. Did you know that some butterflies actually hibernate? They find quiet spots such as a cave or your attic. Other butterflies fly south to warm places. Monarch butterflies fly many, many miles. Clouds of them fill the sky. In the spring, they fly back north. There they will lay their eggs. And soon new butterflies will be here. Maybe some will be in your backyard. So that is a little bit more about the life cycle of a butterfly. And now you know our big secret. When we come back from spring break, we will get caterpillars of our very own. Real life caterpillars. We will watch them eat. We will watch them grow. We will watch them poop. We will watch them shed their skin and even form their chrysalis. And then they will emerge. They will emerge from their chrysalis and we will have actual butterflies in the classroom. It's going to be awesome. So that's gonna be a really exciting thing for us. So right now we're gonna switch gears again, boys and girls, and I want you to take out Mapping My School. So this has an activity on the back that we cannot do. This shows how to build a gingerbread house, but that is unfortunately not something we can do right now, but we sure can talk about maps. All right, thank you, boys and girls. Thank you, boys and girls. This is Mapping My School. Mapping My School. And just like this picture, we actually have rows of classrooms at our school. I know lots of you have never seen it before, but um, you will, one day you will. So it says we can use maps to show where places are at school. Maps show directions or where places can be found. So this is where you walk. You walk, 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 walk in between the classroom. Here's the bathrooms. The library is over here. The gymnasium, the gym is over here. This is just a school. It's not our school, but our school isn't too different. So let me open this up. It says, mapping my school. Maps can show if places are far from or near each other. A school map shows where places are located in a school. Find your classroom. Draw a picture of yourself in the classroom. So I want you to find the classrooms over here. 
So here are the classrooms right here. It says classrooms, and I want you to pick a building. That's gonna be your classroom, and I'll tell you a secret. Our classroom is at the end of a hallway. So I'm even gonna write a number seven right here because we're room seven. Maybe I'll use a darker marker. So here it is, here's my room number seven and here I am in my classroom. Now it says, um, can you find the office? Are you far from the office or near the office? So here's the office right here. It's at the very front of the school. Are we far from it or near it? Well, we're kind of, oh, it says your classroom right there. Silly Mrs. Lai. We're kind of far from the office. So we're a little bit far. Now, here is the library. Is the classroom far from the library? Well, this classroom shows that it's right next to the library. And it says, is the library in front of or behind the cafeteria? So I see here the cafeteria and behind the cafeteria is the library. Now it says, how would you get from your classroom to the gym? Well, let's see here. Turn to your, uh, turn to your neighbor and tell them. So I would go out my classroom, I would turn right, and then I would turn left to get into the gym. Look at that. And if I was over here, I would come out of my classroom. I would turn left. Then I would turn left again, go all the way across to get into the gym. That's pretty amazing. Now over here, it says, some real things are too big to use in school. Models show things in a smaller way. A model can help you learn the parts of things. So here we have the picture of a real car and here is a model of a car. This is like a small toy that you could actually play with. A toy car is a model. It shows the parts of a real car. And down here, here's a picture of a boy in a classroom. Look at the model of the classroom. Is the student standing on the left side or the right side of the flag? So look at the flag. The boy is on the left side of the flag. The board, the white board, is on the right side of the flag. Left side, right side. Can everybody touch the left side of the flag? Touch the boy on the left side of the flag. Now touch the white board on the right side of the flag. Can you touch the right side of the flag? There we go. All right. Now, this activity on the back, I'll just tell you a little bit about it. It's showing you how to build the model, a model of a house. Now, it's not a real house, of course. It's a gingerbread house, and we don't have all of the supplies to build a gingerbread house, although that sure would be something fun to do. But this is the mo a model of a house, and it has the same parts that your house probably does. It has a door, it has windows, it has walls and a roof. Thumbs up if you have all those things where you live. I have door, I have windows, I have a roof, I have walls. Yeah, absolutely. So that is all the model of a house. We're gonna keep talking about maps and how we read maps and why maps are so important for us. So everybody can give a big wiggle, 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 a wiggle, 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 wiggle. And I want you to pull out the life cycle of a butterfly that we started working on yesterday. Thank you, Avery. Perfect. We started writing this yesterday, so go ahead and pull it on out. We are going to write the second part of the life cycle today, right now. Oh, 
All right, boys and girls. So I know we're slowing down. Our internet's slowing down. We're just doing our best. So yesterday, yesterday we wrote that first a female butterfly lays eggs on a leaf. Next, something happens. What? I muted Mrs. Light. Sorry, boys and girls, I don't know how that happened. All right, so we said yesterday that a female butterfly lays eggs on a leaf. And today we're going to write what happens. What happens after a few days? So let's see here. Samira, what happens after a few days? The egg hatches and then a caterpillar emerges. That's right. The egg hatches and a caterpillar emerges. Very well said. So we're going to write that right here next. The egg hatches and a caterpillar emerges. So let me find what I'm going to be writing with here. Something nice and dark that you can see. Next. And I'm going to make this so you can read mine. Let's see. The egg. The egg hatches. Hat. It's literally hat chez. Hat chez. And a caterpillar emerges. And emerge is the science word for what happens when a caterpillar comes out of the egg. It emerges. Next, the egg hatches and a caterpillar emerges. And that's what we're going to write. And when you're done with that, you can go ahead and color, color, color. So I'm gonna go ahead and color, color, color. Yes, Ava? Okay, Ava, if you don't have it right now, let's try this. Do you have any other piece of paper you could write this on right now? And that way when we find it, when you find it, you can write it on that piece of paper. That would work just fine. I've got to get out of the way. Kids are writing, or yeah, kids are copying. But just find any piece of paper, even the back of one of your, one of your pages that you're going to be working on today, like your O page, write it on the back and then you can transfer it when you find this page, okay? Yep, perfect. Just write it on any piece of paper. All right, all right. Yes, Samira? So last weekend on Saturday, I, when I walked with my family and my cousin, um, when I was walking to my uh, first grade school, to my elementary school that I found a and we all found a pink caterpillar. Wonderful. So exciting. It is so nice to be able to find those signs of spring. That is wonderful. All right. And as you're finishing up, make sure you color your caterpillar as well. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. 
I'm gonna leave it there. I see lots of kids still writing, which is fine. Lots of kids are still writing.